finding the voices. Talk show by Monica Ingudam. A huge fan of finding the voices. You're doing a great job for Manipur. Manipur bu prithi vida masatak pa. Good positive uh, voices and you know make those voices more visible. Budget yeah. our voice to reach in all the corners of the world. Finding the Interesting voice. people. In finding the uh, finding voices on people from our own place. Share positive stories and inspiring stories and bring all the good stories of Manipur. Finding the voices. Welcome to Finding the Voices. Right now we are in Imphal and we have Dr. Ajit Vikram, who is a consultant surgeon at Caesar Hospital and focusing in breast and thyroid surgery. Um, I got to know about the excellent initiative about uh, breast cancer treatment in Imphal and I got very excited and I invited Dr. Ajit and we are really thankful that you came over here at such a short notice uh, in your busy schedule to share about this. So Thank welcome you, to sir. our show. Thank you. So first of all, before we get into the detail about the uh, breast cancer awareness and you know what you do at Caesar Hospital, uh, if you can give a brief intro introduction about yourself, tell us a little bit about your family, your schooling, your childhood. Hello everyone uh, who is watching uh, Finding the Voices. My name is uh, Ajit Lukram. Uh, presently I work at uh, Sija Hospitals as a consultant surgeon in Breast and Thyroid Clinic. Um, I grew up in Imphal in a place called Sega Road, Top Lairak. Both my parents uh, happen to be doctors. Both of them are retired now. They are uh, Dr. Amarjit Lukram and Dr. Yendremam Ibechawi. I am the eldest of uh, three siblings. Both my younger brothers are also doctors. The second one is a cardiothoracic surgeon, mm. and the youngest one is a uh, dentist. Okay. Dentist, and I passed out my class ten from Saint Joseph School in Fall okay. in the year 1995. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a very nice childhood, mm. very loving and helpful friends at St. Joseph's School mm -hmm. and then after passing out from St. Joseph's I moved on to Hyderabad and joined um, Ivy League Academy mm -hmm. uh, from where I passed out class 12 in 1997 and then I appeared for the pre-medical test held at Manipur. Mm -hmm. In 1997 I passed my PMT in my first attempt and joined uh, Sawai Man Singh Medical College at Jaipur Okay. and passed out in the year 2003. I completed my internship in 2003. Okay. Did you ever think about other career option or it was only medical line? My uh, second option was um, I planned to join architecture. Mm. If I didn't pass my PMT, I would have joined architecture in 1997. Mm -hmm. But um, luckily I got through it okay. and now I'm a doctor. Okay. <laughs> so now your parents, because both your parents are doctors, mm -hmm. which field are they in? Uh, my father was a surgeon. He was okay. a general surgeon based at RIMS. Okay. Uh, he was uh, the head of department when he retired. Mm -hmm. And then he moved on to become the chairman of the Manipur Public Service Commission. Mm -hmm. And my mom, she was in uh, family welfare department. She retired as a joint director. Okay. So they inspired you to go into the medical line? Yeah, I would say so. Okay, yeah, or was, they, uh, they inspired you or they enforced you to go into the... Uh, <laughs> I was very much impressed by my dad. Mm. He used to wake up um, early in the morning and then uh, he was ready to see his patients by 4 a.m. in the morning. Mm. And so then you saw um, his work from Yeah, he, he was always busy with uh, the patients and then when the patients came out from his uh, clinic, they were always smiling and then they look much better mm. before meeting him and after meeting him they feel like they're healthy now <laughs> so i thought i could do something like him okay. and then uh, i decided to become a doctor okay after okay tell tell me a little bit about your college life 
Um, you said you were in Jaipur. Yeah, yeah Jaipur was um, a very warm state. Mm -hmm. It was always hot, although um, it was very cold in the winter mm -hmm. because it was a desert place. Mm -hmm. uh, I played football throughout my five years in MBBS. I oh was okay. uh, part of the team, Pink college, team. Pink college team as well as the Pink City Football Club. Okay. Uh, we were runners up in uh, 2000, mm -hmm. 2000 and it was quite an eventful uh, part of my life, prime time of my life because uh, I pick up um, very good habits, how to be a man, how to respect others, mm. how to help your fellow team members mm -hmm. and then how to be a good human being because mm -hmm. all of us were staying outside the state sometimes we were in need of money mm. sometimes we were need in need of books mm -hmm. sometimes we were in need of good clothes so all the people staying in the hostel we used to help each other okay. like uh, you can borrow from me this time i will borrow from you next month mm. <laughs> and then uh, there was uh, canteens and uh, mess around the host, uh, hostel sometimes we were short of money mm -hmm. but uh, the managers in the canteen and mess i mean they used to give us food mm -hmm. for free they mm -hmm. used to write down how much we have uh, uh, spent this Balance time so that we can uh, pay them the next month so uh, we learned a lot about humanity and how to be loving mm. while in college so you had an overall good uh, experience mingling with other people outside of Manipur. So is there any experience yeah. which made you feel alienated or because we do hear about mm -hmm. racial discrimination mm -hmm. in other parts of uh, India? Mm, I, I, I don't think so because uh, if you want to be a victim of racism, then you need to be a racist yourself mm -hmm. is what I think mm -hmm. because um, in Jaipur, out of 150 students, only two were Manipuris. Mm. And uh, we didn't feel anything like that when we were in Jaipur. Mm -hmm. And we never read any, anything about racism or um, about uh, the noticeness uh, alienated in the newspapers in Jaipur. Mm -hmm. all so of you us had a very good experience yeah, yeah. with uh, all Yeah, during festivals like uh, Diwali or Dugra Puja or uh, the uh, local Rajasthani festivals, our friends used to invite us to the homes. Mm. Sometimes the um, uh, girls in the class used to cook special meals for us and then mm -hmm. Uh, bring to the hostel and mm -hmm. so can enjoy together. Girls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I think girls are the better cooks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So mm -hmm. now that's really nice to hear. You know, I do want everybody to know that mm -hmm. we do have you know very good uh, uh, experiences and mm -hmm. because the media al always focus only on the other incidents of racism, so mm -hmm. people might think that. It's an overall general uh, problem, which yeah, is not yeah, the case. Yeah, I, I do agree to some extent because uh, when we were in college in 1997 to 2003, it was not a very big issue then. Mm. But now we are reading so many cases of uh, racism where people from uh, the Northeast who look uh, slightly different from the mainland India, mm -hmm. when they go outside to study, um, they have this... Um, problems of being alienated like being called chinkies and mm -hmm. then people from the nordisters uh, their smell of bamboo mm -hmm. they drink and uh, girls and boys they stay together mm -hmm. but we as nordisters we as people from manipur we are all going outside the state to study to achieve something mm -hmm. and then uh, to bring something for the state so we should also take care not to divert ourselves from our goal mm. we should study we should attend college properly in good dress mm -hmm. we should not drink in public mm -hmm. we should not roam around with girls or stay in mm -hmm. which is not acceptable in the Indian society mm -hmm. since we are going to Delhi we should respect the culture of the Indian mainland people also we should not take things for granted like we are so westernized or uh, we don't give a damn about what other people think mm -hmm. because uh, as we live in Rome, we have to be up like the Romans. Mm -hmm. So if we take a little bit care about how we dress up, mm -hmm. how we speak to the mainland people, and if we concentrate on what we want to achieve, like if we are going abroad uh, outside the state to study, mm -hmm. our parents are sending us money to study, to buy books. Mm -hmm. If we set an example, mm -hmm. like even the Manipuri guys can be toppers, all the students from Manipur are good students, mm -hmm. then slowly the people from mainland india will learn to respect us also mm -hmm. so it's high time we did something to correct ourselves as well before blaming others also mm. thank you for sharing your view on that 
So after your college in Jaipur, then what happened? After passing out from uh, SMS Medical College uh, Jaipur in 2003, I prepared for the PLEP exam mm -hmm. to qualify to become a doctor in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. I passed the first part of PLEP in Calcutta mm -hmm. and then I moved to uh, United Kingdom in London. I played I, I stayed in a place called East Ham mm -hmm. and prepared for my play part two. Okay. And then uh, I passed my play part two in uh, 2003 itself. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was um, registered by the General Medical Council London okay. and I was qualified to uh, become a doctor in the United Kingdom. Mm. That time I was received by um, uh, one of my family friends, my father's friends in uh, Kent, mm -hmm. a place in uh, United Kingdom, mm -hmm. and then I was um, uh, working in a small hospital in Kent uh, for about six months, and mm -hmm. I was trying to get a rotation ship in uh, general surgery in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, in the year 2003 to 4, the um, training system changed in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, before, we used to apply as uh, senior house officers in hospitals, do six months rotation, do six months rotation, and then we try for the fellowship. But mm. that time, it became a structured program. Mm -hmm. So um, it was totally new for me, and I was unprepared for it. Mm -hmm. So I came back to Calcutta again, and then I joined my post-graduation after mm -hmm. qualifying for the uh, Diplomat National Board, okay. DNB in General Surgery, mm -hmm. and I joined Calcutta Medical Research Institute mm -hmm. and did my post-graduation in uh, General Surgery. Okay. After passing out um, from Calcutta Medical Research Institute in General Surgery, I moved on to Pondicherry mm -hmm. and I became an assistant professor at uh, Pondicherry Institute of Medical Science. Mm -hmm. I was there for a short while. In between, I was trying to uh, move on to UK again. Mm -hmm. Since I finished my PG in India, I wanted to do my specialization in United Kingdom. Okay. So, so you, because you had the experience over there, you you want you were yeah. I wanted to, to continue. I wanted to continue further specialization and uh, more studies in the United Kingdom. Okay. So um, I was married then. Okay. I was married then, and uh, my wife was in the uh, last year of her PG. Mm -hmm. So I took some leave from Pondicherry and I was in Delhi mm -hmm. and my wife was doing her uh, post graduation in ophthalmology. She mm -hmm. was becoming an eye surgeon mm -hmm. at Hindu Rao Hospital in Delhi. Mm -hmm. So while there, I was staying in a rented house with her in a place called South X in Delhi. Mm -hmm. We uh, read an advertisement in the Ascent of uh, Times of India. Mm -hmm. uh, the people from North Cumbria University Hospital were coming to recruit uh, senior fellows in uh, breast and endocrine mm -hmm. and can move on to colorectal surgery if they want. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were planning to hold the interview at TAS Bengal at uh, Delhi. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, eligible because my criteria was fulfilling all the mm, all requirements. All mm -hmm. So I had passed my play, my um, post graduation in India was complete. So I applied for the thing and they called me for the interview. Mm -hmm. uh, there were um, 28 candidates, mm. uh, people coming from Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Philippines, uh, mm. Korea, Japan, Pakistan, around 28 eligible candidates applied for four posts. Mm. And out of them, uh, four of us were selected and mm. uh, I, I was quite surprised myself, <laughs> but uh, I, I stood first. Yeah, <laughs> wow. Yeah, and I still remember the day I went for the interview. Mm. The interviewer was Mr. Simon Rems, mm -hmm. who is considered as the authority of upper GI surgery worldwide. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's the author of many books. Mm. So he took my interview. Uh, I was the sixth or seventh candidate. He took my interview and then he hold my hand and took me to the other side in the room. I thought, my God, what is this guy? I mean, <laughs> is he trying to scold me or something? Monica, I'm finding the voices. voices. Finding the voice. Finding the voice. I could see my father. Mm -hmm. I could see my father. I could see my father. I see my father. Who came to me in my headmaster. Because he was unable to pay the fee. I'm sorry. I'm 
I told him. Because we need such story for people to have faith in the government and the system that yes, it's working. Let's bring peace in our home state, people, Manipur. Who have got uh, the job without bribery, mm -hmm. they'll do justice to their job and they will help raise the standard of Manipur. Then he took me to the ISR department and told her to mail me right away. Mm. So I got the job offer. Okay. On the same day? On the same day in the evening. Okay. And then uh, I told my parents, they were both uh, very pleased, mm. very, very happy. Mm. And then my, my, my wife was also very happy, but mm. slightly sad because uh, <laughs> she had to stay without me okay. during her last year of PG. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started my preparation to go to UK then. Okay. So uh, I, I, I really want to thank my teachers at uh, North Cumbria University Hospital in the United Kingdom mm -hmm. because they were very supportive from the time uh, I was in India before I moved on. Mm. Uh, they gave me full relocation allowance. It okay. was a absolutely... So this is the full paid fellowship? Full paid fellowship, yeah. Mm. It was an uh, absolutely full uh, free journey to the United Kingdom. Mm. They sent tickets uh, for me to travel from Calcutta to Dubai and mm. from Dubai to Newcastle. Okay. And you'll be surprised. It Newcastle Airport, mm -hmm. there was a car waiting for me to take me to the university. Mm. So, so they had arranged everything for you? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. With all my luggage and then uh, I was going with uh, suitcases and handbags mm. and then um, there was somebody to receive me at the airport after such a long journey. Mm. So it was very, uh, like yeah, I, 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 yeah, was like really I, yeah I was really impressed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how was your experience in during the tenure of your fellowship? It was a totally new experience, quite different from what uh, we um, studied as a doctor during my uh, MBBS days and post graduation in India. Mm. The um, education system in uh, the United Kingdom was 100% um, uh, clinical based. Mm -hmm. They did not depend much on books mm. to study and remember protocols. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time we were based in the hospitals so it's more practical. Yeah, it's like more practical. Yeah. In the field and yeah, okay. every patient admitted in the hospital has to go certain steps called protocols, mm -hmm. and these protocols are followed similarly mm. and equally in all the yeah. districts of England. So there is a England. standardization. Yeah, there is a standardization. Mm -hmm. Suppose if a patient with um, uh, accident, a trauma, or if a patient with breast cancer is admitted in uh, Carlisle, mm -hmm. then the same protocol will be followed when the patient is admitted in Wales. Mm -hmm. So uh, the protocol is very strict out there mm -hmm. and I think it's a very safe protocol also. Mm. And also it's fair, like you feel that, you know, yeah. people will not choose like one hospital over the other because yes, it will be the same yes. protocol. No doctor is good treatment. or no doctor is bad there mm -hmm. because if you are qualified to become a consultant in, in the United Kingdom or mm -hmm. if you are qualified to become a registrar in the United Kingdom mm -hmm. then you are awarded, mm -hmm. you deserve it. Mm -hmm. So how did you, is it over there that you got specialized into the breast and thyroid uh, surgery? Yeah, first mm -hmm. I joined the colorectal department. Mm -hmm. Mr. Simon Rems uh, suggested me that since you have worked in GI surgery in India for some time you should work in our colorectal department for some time mm -hmm. and then when you are given the chance to choose, you may choose any other department. Mm. So I, wo I work with Mr. Frank Hinson in the colorectal department at uh, North Cumbria University Hospital mm -hmm. uh, based at Carlisle. It's just below Scotland, mm -hmm. uh, very cold place mm. and um, it was very good experience. It was totally uh, new and exciting experience for me mm. because in India when I did my PG and MBBS I used to study a lot of books mm. and um, and now I'm like in the place where the books were written mm. so <laughs> the teachers were I mean uh, so humble 
they teach you how to do every step mm. in a very simple way mm. and if you don't know also they will tell like nobody is a bone surgeon mm. and it's never too late to learn mm. so i mean they they make you very comfortable. yeah yeah and then they encourage you to do more research work mm -hmm. uh, every trainee in the united kingdom has to do an audit throughout their training mm. continuously mm -hmm. so are you saying that in india when you studied it was like you had to do a lot of like reading and a uh, lot of studies and the practical is less i, I would say so because uh, Becoming a surgeon in India, you have to do your post graduation in three years. Mm. So you are compressed to learn all the things in three years. Remember the signs, symptoms, syndromes, surgeries, mm. do your thesis, do your um, uh, research work in three years. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is enough because uh, learning surgery or any other branch in medicine is a apprenticeship. Mm. I mean, you have to stick to your guru, right. your teacher, and then learn, learn how right. it and uh, and. Um, I mean, it, it should take more time, mm. more time, so that we can do more of uh, clinical practice as mm. well. Yeah, but then the fellowship, maybe they had more practical over there because you are already, you know, like you have learned all the theoretical and... Yeah, I, 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 I would agree with yeah. that also, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I mean, I, I just don't want to confuse our listener that we are comparing apple to apple because mm -hmm. you are doing the fellowship over there and yeah it, it was a post they already post expect that yeah. you know all yeah. the theoretical yeah, ideas I would, yeah, yeah. And I, I would say yeah. i just fit it in into the program right, yeah right. yeah yeah but it's mm. a great experience like yeah. for you to have that experience abroad and um, kind mm -hmm. of compare like what what you have in india also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what other things can you share about your experience um, I would like to say the screening programs followed in the United Kingdom. Mm. I, I think it will be uh, very helpful to the viewers of Finding the Voices also. Mm -hmm. um, in colorectal surgery, while I was working in colorectal surgery, mm -hmm. they had a colorectal screening program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So every person, men or women, above the age of 50, mm -hmm. will get a letter from the general practitioner. Mm. In the United Kingdom, everybody has to be registered with the general practitioner. Mm. So the general practitioners deal with day-to-day -day cases, as well as they remind the patients when to have the screening program done. Right. So everybody above the age of 50 years will get a letter in their post box from the GP, mm -hmm. and the GP would advise them to come into the GP clinic mm -hmm. to have their pickle blood test done. Mm. So it's checking off presence of blood in the stool mm. and it's done on three consecutive days. Mm. If there is a spot of blood in the stool, mm -hmm. the patient will be invited to have a colonoscopy. Mm. So colonoscopy is one of the uh, most important screening tools mm -hmm. to diagnose colon cancer. Okay. And incidentally, colon cancer is... Uh, becoming more frequent nowadays mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom is quite frequent mm -hmm. even in India uh, the number of colon cancer cases are rising mm -hmm. so if they have this screening program the purpose of this program is to uh, catch the disease at Earlier. a very early stage right, right. so they can take it out the patient can have chemotherapy and get it cured mm. so this is one screening program in uh, colorectal department which was totally new to me okay we, so we you didn't were have not that exposed in to the idea of the screening yeah. program based on age factor yeah mm -hmm. and then uh, the interventional techniques in endoscopy like uh, removal of the uh, early cancer in the colon through colonoscopy mm -hmm. uh, biopsy mm. these were all very new to me okay and uh, uh, they had a department uh, dedicated only to colon cancer mm. and people with um, colonoscopic findings of uh, suspicious tumors they had an orange tag on the files okay. and then they were given so it's color coded and yeah, then they were prioritized given based yeah, on yeah, that yeah more preference to see the doctors early okay got it got it totally i have worked in uh, united kingdom for four and a half years but in this university i worked for around three years Okay, so you have a very long experience over there. Yes, uh, yes, I would say so because um, I did some observership in some places also, mm -hmm. uh, like in Wales mm. and then in Kent mm -hmm. and then in London mm -hmm. and then um, I moved on to Carlisle. Okay, how did you get your specialization in, uh, in the breast surgery? 
yeah after completing my um, clinical fellowship in uh, colorectal surgery at uh, north cumbria i was given the option to choose another branch mm. so there was uh, upper gi surgery there was um, lower gi surgery mm -hmm. there was breast and endocrine surgery mm. breast and endocrine surgery was totally new to me mm. because there was no such branch in india people oh, operating okay. only on breast and endocrine mm -hmm. you will uh, not find uh, those kinds of uh, specialization yeah okay. uh, during that time so it was um, uh, totally new to me and i thought what do they do there mm. i think i should uh, join this department and see um, i mean uh, what kind of surgeries do they do in breast what kind of surgeries do they do in uh, thyroid surgery mm. so um, it was an exciting uh, mm. choice for me so i took breast and thyroid mm -hmm. there were two consultants there Mr. Mike Williams, mm -hmm. who was a British, uh, very, very much British, I would say. Mm. And then uh, there was Mr. Um, Bartholomew, Ludger mm -hmm. Bartholomew. He was mm -hmm. a German. Mm. Both of them were uh, consultants in breast. One was um, um, into screening of breast cancer, mm -hmm. Mr. Ludger. And mm -hmm. then Mr. Um, Williams was into oncoplastic breast surgery. Mm -hmm. He was into uh, removal of the breast and uh, construction of the breast on the same day of the surgery. Mm. So um, I joined the unit and then I attended the um, multi-modality uh, meetings, mm -hmm. uh, how to uh, stay and treat breast cancer. Mm -hmm. I also attended their clinics mm -hmm. and surgeries. Mm -hmm. I stayed with them for around um, 16 months okay. before coming back to India. Okay, okay. So that's how you got your experience on different cases and, uh, you know, uh, and learned about more and be focused more about uh, breast than yes, thyroid Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All, no, but why did you come back to India? Did you choose to come back or? When I was in the uh, United Kingdom, the only source of uh, communication with um, Manipur and my friends in India was Skype. Mm. I used to chat with my family mm. on Skype and I r used to read Epau. Okay. Epau. So <laughs> whenever I used to go through uh, newspapers in India and then about the uh, people in Manipur, how the patients in Manipur are uh, suffering, uh, what are the hard hardships they are going through. Mm -hmm. I used to have a hair raising mm. uh, experience. I used to feel um, very mm. sad. Why I'm here? Mm. Why can't I go back and do something for the state? Mm -hmm. Like um, I used to, uh, I mean, uh, my eyes used to be wet and then um, mm. I used to be very lonely sometimes. Mm. Like I'm here in a very good place mm. with all the modern facilities. Mm. I'm having good food, good place. I can go anywhere. but what I'm doing for my state. Mm. I thought I should go back to my state and then do whatever is possible mm. from my side mm -hmm. because I've done all my education at St. Joseph School in Fal with mm. all my friends. I miss them also. Mm. So I thought I should <laughs> join my friends there in uh, mm. Manipur. Mm. I should come back. So it was the love for, for Manipur that brought you back? I, I, I would say so. Yeah. Mm.